We're in Culpeper, Virginia at the Library of Congress Audio and Film Conservation Center here. This whole building here is underground. It used to be where they were going to send the government and all the bureaucrats to run the government uh, if the government had to go underground literally at some point. It's been turned over to the Library of Congress. They keep films in here. They keep the old nitrate stock. We're going to see how they preserve films. It's going to be very exciting. So let's go see what's up. There are 90 miles worth of shelf space in the complex. The facility houses nearly 3 million sound recordings, plus 1.3 million film, television, and video recordings. And thousands more arrive every week, some old, some new. Uh, I'm Mike Michon, head of the Moving Image section, Packard Campus for Audiovisual Conservation in Culpeper, Virginia. Enterprising producers like Thomas Edison and others did is they exposed their negatives on rolls of photographic contact paper and they registered it as a photograph. This is actually a very, very famous film. This is the end of the Edison film 1903, The Great Train Robber. Mm -hmm. yes. Two-inch quadruplex tape. This is from May 22, 1958. This is the introduction of color television in Washington, D.C. Uh, at WRC on Nebraska Avenue. So, uh, in a ceremony attended by President Eisenhower, hosted by Robert Sarnoff, president of NBC, and during the ceremony he says, uh, you know, he flips a switch and he goes from black and white to color, uh, and then he tells President Eisenhower, we're recording the show on a, a new video recording format. We're making two copies, one for your personal retention, one we're giving to the Library of Congress. Mm -hmm. So uh, this That's is our it. copy. It still plays very well. Are I'm you? George Williman. I'm the nitrate vault manager for Library of Congress. <laughs> the only known nitrate print of a call, early Colleen Moore film called Little Orphan Annie. It's, it's for reels. This is just a, a small portion of it. Uh, it's from 1917. It's uh, the Mexican, the famous Mexican ruins. And it is a ruin itself. As you can see, every time you touch it, it'll uh -huh. and just go. Besides being fragile, nitrate film is also highly flammable. That's why the Library of Congress built an entirely separate wing of 124 volts just to restore the original copies of nitrate films. Despite the danger, nitrate film was used well into the 1950s, so many of Hollywood's most memorable films are at risk. Even today, employees are warned if a roll spontaneously ignites, their job is to run for their lives. During the Cold War, this site was the lead-lined emergency headquarters of the Federal Reserve Bank, where the bank's staff and a lot of the bank's money would hunker down during a nuclear war. Beginning in 1997, the David and Lucille Packard Foundation began pouring more than $160 million into the site, creating a state-of-the-art facility for the preservation and cataloging of America's visual and audio record. Hi, my name is Ken Weissman. I'm the Film Laboratory Supervisor. We have here on the left is a scan from a film that was pretty much as we found, what, as we found it, and you'll notice it's kind of moving up and down, right? That's right. Is, that was. was it originally oh. supposed to have a blue tint, or was it just the way it was since it was old? Tints and, tints and tones actually were used very much as the standard approach in the silent film era. Hmm. Very seldom was a film monochrome or black and white mm -hmm. on the screen. Uh -huh. oh. The center has sound recordings that date back for just about as long as sound recordings have been made. Some of America's most famous names have donated their sound collections to the library, and they come in all levels of condition, from the pristine to the unplayable. Um, I'm Brad McCoy. Um, I've been at the library about 20, well, almost 30 years now, actually. Um, I'm an audio engineer. Okay, that just this is true even of a church. Whenever the spirit of life... Interestingly enough, this just happened to be what I was preserving this morning. So that is a speech, or a sermon, if you will, by a representative of the Church of the Latter-day Saints, uh, broadcast um, October 18th, 1940. Hundreds of thousands of old VHS tapes are in the library's collection, and to digitize them one by one would be simply impossible. So the facility has specially designed robots that do just what you used to do with your old tapes. They stick them in a player, they hit the eject button when they're done. Day and night, the robots watch more TV than any person could in a lifetime. All that digital information has to live somewhere, and this is the place. A computer bank that also has a mirror twin in a secret, undisclosed location. That we produce upstairs. Moved over to these storage tech robotic data tape library. Thousands and thousands of slots, and most of those slots are filled with these data tapes, like the one I'm holding in my hand. 
Right now, each of these data tapes holds one terabyte. Non-flammable copies of the library's movies are stored here, in what's little more than an airtight 35-degree refrigerator. During the Cold War, the government kept billions of dollars in this vault for use in case of nuclear war. Now it's the home to billions of dollars worth of Hollywood classics. Now, I invite you to look at some of the titles that we have right here. This one reason why we like to read people. What are you seeing here? Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind. I believe that you've heard of this. Porgy and Bess is a 1959 film directed by Otto Preminger. And that film, uh, there are many, many issues uh, with the Gershwin estate, so the film's never really been re-released on video. We have one of the very few surviving film prints. Of Porgy and Beth. Visitors seldom get to see the workings of the center, but film lovers do get to enjoy regular screenings at the state of the art theater that combines classic design with cutting edge technology. The Packard Center screens films year round on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and it's all free. You just have to find a way to Culpeper, Virginia. Quite an interesting place, isn't it, down here in Culpeper, Virginia? Uh, it's nice to see the technology that's being used to save films and save TV programs and music. But the real inspiration, I think, is the people here who moved here to Culpeper, Virginia, because they love for the visual and audio legacies of our country. And it's a place you should come visit for the film festivals, go up to Washington, D.C., to the Library of Congress, and see and hear what they have to offer. Um, that's a place you'll never forget. Thanks a lot.